What's up guys, welcome back to Hardware Unboxed, I'm your host Matt. Last week we reviewed the new Radeon R9-390X and I made what turned out to be a pretty controversial comment when I said that the 8GB memory buffer was frankly unnecessary. I'd already compared the 8GB 390X to the 4GB 290X of 4K in games that use more than 4GB of VRAM, so I knew it to be true. Before I share those results with you, I'll show you a little bit about how VRAM works and how we tested. Much like the relationship between the DRAM and CPU, VRAM is a memory buffer that keeps the GPU fed with the information it needs to render images. VRAM holds textures, frame buffer and other assets that are required in the rendering process such as bump maps, shutter maps and lighting information. This is done because it's considerably faster for the GPU to pull information from the VRAM opposed to say a hard drive, SSD or the system memory. For example, the fastest CIDR consumer SSDs are limited to around 550 megabytes per second. Intel's Core i7-5960X accesses its system memory at a little over 50 gigabytes per second and the Radeon R9-390X moves data from the VRAM at around 384 gigabytes per second. The big question that gamers often seem to ask is how much VRAM they really need. This is where things get a little bit complicated. It's true that high resolutions, high quality textures and rendering features such as anti-aliasing can use quite a lot of VRAM and today's latest games are pushing past 4 gigabytes. However, that doesn't mean that loading a graphics card with 8 gigabytes of VRAM will necessarily ensure better performance at high resolutions. The key component isn't the VRAM, but rather the GPU connected to the VRAM. The GPU has to have enough horsepower to render the image that would require that much VRAM to store it. The R9-390X is a perfect example. It's essentially a rehashed R9-290X, and a single 290X was never powerful enough for high quality 4K gaming. Adding an extra 4 4GB of VRAM and calling it a day isn't a real solution as this doesn't improve the GPU's ability to crush more data. As a result, if you were to play a game that requires 6GB of VRAM, the R9-390X wouldn't necessarily be any faster than the same GPU equipped with 4GB of VRAM. The GPU just simply isn't powerful enough to take advantage of all the extra data. Now, for my benchmarks, we've overclocked the Gigabyte R9-290X to match the operating clock speeds of the HIS R9-390X. This means the core has been set at 1050 MHz, while the memory has been clocked at 1500 MHz. By creating a clock-for-clock -clock scenario, the changes in performance can only be attributed to the size of the memory buffer. Starting with Crisis 3, you can see that when operating at the same clock speeds, the R9-390X and the R9-290X deliver the exact same performance at 4K with 22 frames per second each. Now 22 frames isn't enough for smooth playable performance in Crisis 3, so the amount of VRAM being used is irrelevant in this example. Regardless, we see that the game only requires a little over 2GB of VRAM, which is surprisingly low. If we were to boost anti-aliasing levels to increase memory usage, we'd be reducing the gameplay to looking pretty much like a slideshow. Moving on, we have Battlefield Hardline, which was tested using maximum in-game quality settings with 2 times MSAA applied. Again, the R9-290X and the 390 delivered the same performance once clock speeds for the core memory were matched. With just a 35 frames per second average, gamers wouldn't want to go any lower and this time we see roughly 3 gigabytes of VRAM usage. Out of interest, we increased the MSAA level to 4 times which reduced the average frame rate to 28 frames per second and increased VRAM usage to just 3.6 gigabytes. Playing Dying Light at 4K only allowed the 290X and 390X to deliver an average of 29 frames per second, though again it's important to note the clock for clock we received the same result. Dying Light did require up to 4GB of VRAM at this resolution using the highest quality in game settings. It is impossible to turn anything else up, so 4GB was the maximum amount of VRAM the game could use in our test. Next we have Grand Theft Auto 5, a known VRAM hog. While the game can be set up to use 6.5GB of VRAM, the Radeon R9-390X simply cannot come close to delivering playable performance under those conditions. The standard graphics settings were maxed out with FXAA applied while the advanced graphics settings were disabled. This meant that the R9-390X was good for just 36 frames per second, while the R9-290X was just one frame slower. Roughly 3.3 gigabytes of VRAM was used. Metro Redux is a lot like Crisis 3 in the sense that visually it is quite an impressive game, and yet it uses very little VRAM. Both the 390X and the 290X average just 24 frames per second, and despite that, just 1.2 gigabytes of VRAM was being used. Now, here we have a game that's well known 
known for its heavy use of VRAM thanks to a high resolution DLC package. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor is the first game we have looked at that's seen VRAM usage exceed 4 gigabytes. The i9-390X saw its VRAM usage hit 5.2 gigabytes at 4K, while the i9-290X obviously maxed out at 4 gigabytes. Despite the 290X's obvious VRAM capacity limitation, it was just one frame per second slower than the 390X. Finishing up, we have the new Batman Arkham Knight, and it's an even bigger VRAM user than Middle Earth. At 4K, the VRAM usage of the i9-390X hit 6.1 gigabytes, while the i9-290X was again limited at 4 gigabytes, and yet Despite this, once again, the R9-290X was just one frame per second slower. So there you have it. Even in games that clearly use more than 4GB of VRAM, the R9-390X just simply doesn't have the processing power to take advantage of its extra memory. And subsequently, when they go clock for clock, it delivers the exact same performance as the R9-290X. Are you surprised by these results? Let me know in the comments. Hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.